All right, we got time to talk about Dynamite, and then we'll do the Rampage spoilers here. This was uh, the show from Wednesday, and it opened up with the Adam Cole segment, and he essentially explained to everybody that, you know, y'all think I'm a bad guy, but you're all going to thank me someday. The locker room's going to thank me for getting rid of MJF. Tony's going to thank me. You'll never see him again. He's never coming back. And he essentially said they all want gold, and Kingdom want the tag team titles, Roddy international title. And he says Wardlow will be going for the world title. Well, well the kingdom, the kingdom have the tag titles. Yes, so we have to worry about the other guys. He said that uh, Wardlow is going to win the title, and then when I'm healthy, he is going to forfeit that title to me. So they're doing that storyline, which is essentially what they're doing with Luchasaurus as well. And he said we're sick and yeah, tired. The, of- the, the, the thing was with, with this one is just that it, Wardlow was acting like this is cool, I don't care, whereas Luchasaurus was acting like. You know. Well, he is now, but I mean, ultimately, Wardlow is not going to be happy winning the title and forfeiting it to it, it should, Adam Cole. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, the, with, with 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 Luchasaurus or Killswitch, I mean, it's really obvious that they're going to try to make Killswitch into a big time babyface. Yes, and then Switchblade's music hit. He was unhappy that he was collateral damage as they were taking out people close to MJF or feuding with MJF, and so he said, "You jumped me when I was alone. I'm not alone now." So the guns and switchblade hit the ring. They're getting overwhelmed. Acclaim comes down. They make the save. So Acclaimed and Bullet Club work together. Acclaimed wanted a scissor, but Bullet Club left. Well, they teased the idea of a trios match, and the guys bailed. So, because um, they were squaring off. So, will I guess you know the Acclaimed and Billy Gunn need opponents? So. You know, I guess that's something in Jay White and the Gun Brothers have nothing going on. So it's a match. Video package of Eddie Kingston's tournament win. And then we had this great Daniel Garcia promo package. I mean, he was so good in this promo package that I was actually irritated that he was going to lose the main event, which, in fact, he did. Orange Cassidy, Dante Martin, they had a good match, good heat, good athletics. Uh, There was a light CM Punk chant in this match. When Dante uh, caught him on a Hurricane Rana and hit a power bomb into a GTS, but that got shouted down. And then Dante tried to come off the top. Orange tried to roll away. Dante rope walk into a big splash. Near falls back and forth. Orange hit the punch out of nowhere, got the pin. Very good match. And then afterwards, they're uh, you know playing Orange's music. Then they stop. They start playing Top Flight's music, which is wrong music. And then they play Private Party's music. So somebody hit the wrong button somewhere. And Mark Coyne is back. And he says, we've been keeping tabs on this division, but it is lacking some private party. And we're putting everybody on notice, including the Hardys. And we will be tag champs in 2024. Well, they mentioned all the teams. They mentioned uh, FTR, Young Bucks. Um, Yeah. Tony Storm promo. She doesn't want to be here. She wants to be in New York. So she's leaving to Broadway tonight. And uh, Renee says, well, you know, Mariah May is debuting, and she wants you to watch one of her matches. Tony says, I don't watch wrestling. So she says she needs to pay her dues. I will not be staying in New Jersey. So she leaves. So then we had a House of Black promo. You ready for this? I'm ready. House of Black says that they will be facing FTR in North Carolina in front of their friends and family. Charlotte. Charlotte on Friday, on Saturday. If we beat you, you must walk away from your family, disown them, and join your new family. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Ridiculous. Swerve and Nana promo about the match with Daniel Garcia. Swerve says, I respect that Daniel... Basically, was after the same thing I was in 2023, which was a singles title. And tonight, you will go through pain. And in 2024, I'm going after Samoa Joe's title. So then we had the debut of Mariah May against Queen Aminata. And, uh, I mean, it was it was a match. And uh, I actually think Queen Aminata looked better than Mariah May in this match. And uh, made a comeback... Mariah cut her off, sling blade, mayday, got the pin. So uh, then Renee goes interview her afterwards, 
And she says, uh, I can't believe I won my debut. I've wanted to do this since I was a little kid. Being in this ring is surreal to me. I hope Miss Tony Storm is watching and is proud. It's the first dynamite of the new year. It's all about Mariah. But my only regret is I have to do this in New Jersey. And so suddenly Deanna Prazzo's music hits. She makes her debut. And she says, I have a message for Tony. Doesn't matter where you run or where you hide. I'm going to find you because I am all elite. Mariah says, well, you know, I'm not your messenger, so uh, tell her yourself, bitch. So uh, Renee gets the hell out of the ring. Brawl breaks out, and uh, Deanna beats her ass, sends her packing. So Deanna has debuted mm-hmm. and uh, will be feuding with Tony. No, Mariah first. Probably, yeah. But she's called out Tony. Christian Killswitch, Nick, and Shayna Wayne come out, interview with Tony Schiavone. And uh, it's just a long segment where Christian explains that, uh, you know, he's the new TNT champion. He's essentially been the champion since the debut of Collision, which, of course, was uh, actually uh, Luchasaurus winning the title. But he says, I got a lot of people I want to thank. I want to thank Mother Wayne. Mother's work is never done. I want to thank my pride and joy, Nick Wayne. Put his body on the line through a flaming table. I love you, Nick. And lastly... I want to thank the man who sealed my victory at World's End. The man who put the final nail in the coffin. Well, that would be myself. And so Killswitch is very upset. And cuts a promo on Adam, says he's never going to get another shot at the TNT title. This is the most important belt in the entire company. Fans are chanting Luchasaurus. And he says, I'll hold the title as long as I want, and then I will hand it over to my protege, Nick Wayne. We're the faces of AEW now and forever. So, uh... I presume, now that he's not the devil, Jungle Boy coming back to reunite with Luchasaurus would be my thought as a babyface tag team. Really? Why not? Uh, he left his He went and trademarked all the boy and his dinosaur stuff. Yeah, he did. He and, did you, uh, you know, him and Luchasaurus against Nick Wayne and Christian. I mean, there's a lot yeah. of things you can do. I don't know that's going to happen, but that's what I thought watching this because clearly Luchasaurus is splitting here soon. We split, and I don't know how soon, but yeah. I mean, the problem with that is, is like, I just remember with um, Max and um, Wardlow, and, you know, I thought they were splitting soon, and they took, like, years. Yes, they did. Way too long. And then as soon as they split, Wardlow was dead after being one of the hottest guys. Yeah. Because they had, once they did the split, they had no idea what to do. Renee with Ruby, Saray, and Harley backstage. Can you explain what happened here? I think that. I, I think that like uh, Harley will do anything for Soraya, and Ruby doesn't really know what to make of her, and Soraya doesn't know what to make of her. Mm. Yep, yep. Well, I have Maybe no she, idea what's going on. I think she, I think she had a crush on Soraya. That's what I thought too, but yeah, that's, uh, that's, how I, that's how I viewed it. But somebody else uh, suggested maybe what's happening here is Soraya wants Harley to seduce Angelo Parker. Oh, well, they didn't really tease that, but that that They didn't, happen. but that makes sense. It does make sense, though. Yeah, that's actually a cool idea. Because Soraya hates that guy and wants Ruby away from him. Yeah, that actually so, makes sense. I guess we'll see. Yeah, that that would be something. Harley's then got, we Har- have... Har- Harley, Harley's really talented, but I just don't know what you do with her. Because she's not a wrestler. Well, she's going to be a uh, a manager. I mean, like. like some of the stuff like that she does that she does like she's a she's very talented at um, being Harley at, at, at something. But it's it's but it's and I, I suppose there's ways to put it into pro wrestling, but it's not it's not really like something like you don't really like singers and rappers and everything like that. I guess you do have Max Caster as a rapper, but he can but he still wrestles. You know what I mean? Just a rapper for the sake of rapping, you know, um, I I mean, like, I see her and I think, like, she can be a real star, but I'm not sure, like, how you do it because it's like, you know, and, and you know, just, I don't I don't know. I don't think that for AEW fans want, like, you know, WWE, you know, 19, you know, whatever it was, 1998, Sable, whatever, you know what I mean? Like, just women there for that, you know, it's kind of like backwards and I wouldn't fly. So I don't know. Not I'm not you know like, but Harley's like got, uh, she's got something, um, but she's not a wrestler. You know, I mean, I guess if they, 
I guess if she's an, if she can act and they're going to do a skit like this, maybe that'll work. I don't know. Well, then we had an absolutely fantastic match here. Takeshita and Darby Allen. Oh, it was a great match, yeah. God, really great. This, this match was awesome. This match should have been on the dome. Takeshita is just... hes They're both great. They're, they're both, both great. great. But Takeshita but, but, is a giant monster. But and the thing, Darby the thing, is a tiny man willing to kill himself for this sport. The thing, the thing is, is that they really are great opponents for each other. Well... I mean, we had Darby going for the tope and getting kneed to death out of midair. Double rolling chaos theory on the ramp. Stun dog off the middle rope by Darby. Crazy flip dive to the barricade. Place is going nuts. Coffin drop. Takesha barely makes it back in. Gets immediately with a code red for a near fall. Darby tries another coffin drop. Takesha gets a knees up. German, German, lariat, hard knee. German off the top. Not the kind where you flip the guy over, but flat on his back off the top. Yeah. And then Darby's on his knees demanding, just bring it. So Takesha kills him with a knee and pins him. This match was phenomenal. Loved this match. Yeah. And then Don cut a promo on the back saying Sting is 25-0. and 0. Next week he's going to be 25-1. and 1. So it's Sting and Darby against Takesha and Will Hobbs. That's an interesting match. Looking like next week on the show. Because it's like Takesha and Will Hobbs probably shouldn't lose, um, but Sting never loses. I could Sting's see not... Sting pinning Will Hobbs. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I, I could see Sting pinning Takeshita. They might say, hey, we just gave Takesha to win. We can take this one back. Because they've been, they've been pretty much protecting. It's so weird because Will Hobbs destroys Omega and, I mean, doesn't do a match with them. And even though, like, Omega, you know, went down, the fact is they weren't even going in that direction after he destroyed Omega. Then destroys Jericho. And they looked like they were going to do something there. And now who 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 knows what's going on. They never mentioned, like, Jericho and um, Sammy Guevara, you know, are supposed to be built up for Big Bill and Ricky Starks. That's what the last pay-per-view was. But they said nothing in that direction. You know, I mean, they did no hype for that. I don't know if they're still going there or they've dropped that one completely. I don't know. Then we had Vikingo, Brian Cage, Trent, Brian Keith, German number one contender at Eddie Kingston, the Triple Crown. It's a real fun all-action match. I thought Cage was awesome in this match. He was like the showcase guy, all the big spots. Vikingo's always good, too. Always. Yeah, but he, uh, I thought Cage was a standout here. Actually, actually, I thought, I, thought, I thought Brian Keith really showed a lot, too. Brian Keith's He's very he good. Like, He's very good. He's just a guy that people don't know. You know, it's like, which is one of those things with, with AW is, is, you know, they've got these guys, you know, Vikingo, Trent, these guys that are very good. Brian Cage, you know, all of these guys, they're very good, but, you know, people don't see them as, as stars. And it's very difficult, you know, to, you know, unless you like just focus on them and just go, we're going to make you a star. You just throw them out there and they go out and have really good matches. It's just like the really good matches these days is not, you know, there's a time when AEW when the really good matches were, you know, you never seen anything like that on TV and they that, that worked. And now people have seen so many really good matches that they're looking for personalities. And and then you get these guys that they just go out there and they're not doing lots of promos and they're not doing, you know, anything like that. They're just going out there and having great matches and it's, you know, it's, it's tough on the ratings. But um, they, you know, yeah. Good, good wrestling, you know, very good wrestling. So then Hangman shows up and he says, I'm here to beat somebody's ass. I dare somebody to give me a reason. Of course, this is the last segment for the main event, so you knew it was going to happen. So Robin Daniel Garcia, good match. Uh, dance off between Garcia and Nana early on, which uh, actually allowed uh, Swerve, actually Nana grabbed the foot and then Swerve hit the Death Valley driver on the apron for the heat. So uh, they brawl outside. Daddy Magic's out there. Swerve gets in his face. So uh, Garcia swerves him into the barricade, puts him on the table. Going for the Dragon Tamer. They fall off the table, mm. and they got a you fucked up chant. I don't think I've ever heard that in AEW now that I think about it. And Trade Near falls in the ring. Swerve at the flatliner, the house call. They're letting Garcia kick out everything. But finally, Swerve hits another house call. JML Driver gets the pin. So Swerve offers a handshake, but it's a ruse. Nana sneaks in and gives a low blow. 
So Daddy Magic hits the ring. They beat him up as well. And Nana's is cutting this promo about how Swerve is the next AEW champion when Hangman's music hits. Runs out of the ring for a brawl. Sends Nana packing. Huge brawl. Security runs down. Separates him. Let him fight Chance. So uh, Hangman Swerve 3 is inevitable. Yeah. And Swerve won the first two. So that's pretty interesting. Really interesting. The and only Hangman way- did vow... I will stop you from getting what you want the most, yeah. which obviously is the world title. Yeah. I I mean, the way I would go is um, if Swerve's going to win the world title, then he loses to Hangman. That way you've set up a challenger when Swerve's the champion. Yeah, you could do that. That That's, you know, because Swerve beating Hangman for a third time, it's like, you know, I mean, the, the, the you know, I mean, they beat they beat their baby they beat their top baby faces too much, so or you know I mean again this was like a show when I th- when I was thinking about it when it was over, it was like all heel you know what I mean all heel you know what I mean Cash is a heel, Swerve's a heel even though people like him, um, you know Adam Cole you know all the focus is on the heels, and with Max gone, I mean the thing they badly need, you know. It's a top baby face. And I got no idea who that would be right now. Because Swerve's a heel. Joe's not. Joe's a heel. Um, you know, what, go back to Brian Danielson and Moxley, who've been heelish at different times, although they can be baby faces at a snap of a finger anytime. I mean, like the top baby faces, like Eddie Kingston and Orange Cassidy. And that's not, you know, nothing against either of those guys, but neither of those guys are your top main event pay per view baby face. And that's what they need really bad. And Adam Page, perhaps, I mean, he might be the best one that they got that's available right now. Um, but, you know, unless, unless, you know, if Swerve's going for the big championship, um, you know, and, and he's going to lose, um, I don't know, then he should probably beat Page. If he's going to win it, Page can beat him. Um, and it's actually probably pretty good for Page at this point because, you know, they need they need someone. I don't know if Page is the guy to be the super top baby face, but you need someone, and he's he may be the best one that they've got right now, you know, other than Eddie Kingston, really. Hey, if you love this clip, have I got a deal for you. WrestlingObserver.com. Do you have a commute? Do you work out at the gym? Do you like listening to audio on your headphones or your earbuds or whatever the kids use today? Well, WrestlingObserver.com will give you all the audio you'll ever need in your life. Over 15,000 audio shows. Every audio show that we have ever done, dating back to 2005, is available for subscribers at WrestlingObserver.com. Every time a new show comes out, you can podcast it directly to your phone. If you have a commute... As noted, if you go to the gym, if you like to lift weights and listen to Granny review soap operas, well, WrestlingObserver.com gets you full access to all of these shows and all of these archives. You can go back and listen to TNA reviews from 2010. You can go back and listen to reviews of every WWE pay-per-view, every big story that's ever happened in wrestling. You can get access to that at WrestlingObserver.com. Plus, full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter every week. 40,000 words of news and information in pro wrestling. Why get all your scoops off Reddit, which aren't even accurate most of the time? Go right to the source, the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. You also get Observer Archives dating back to 1990. So check it out today. Thousands of issues of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. Tens of thousands of hours of audio. All for $12.99 per month or as low as $9.99 if you sign up for a year. You'll never, you'll never run out of audio if you subscribe to WrestlingObserver.com. So head up there, check it out today, and I'll talk to you again after a while.